Hello guys, so today I wanted to film a video all about new launches coming out in January. This video is a little bit later than I normally upload my new in beauty videos, which are normally more towards the beginning of the month. Uh, mainly because everything kind of shuts down over Christmas, um, so in terms of my communication from brands on what's coming out um, and when, that was kind of tends to be more limited towards the end of the year but also there aren't as many launches in January you come from like the Christmas crazy madness of November December um, January tends to be quite quiet and then it all kind of starts to kick off again in February but there have been a few new launches this month that I've taken the time out this week to try and test and give them a full road test for you guys so that I can give you my thoughts and kind of first impressions some of them a little bit more of an in-depth review if I've had them for a bit longer but most of them are first impressions so my favourite launch this month, I'm going to start off with the reformulation of Dior Forever. If you guys have followed me for a while, you'll know the Dior Forever foundation is one of my probably top three all-time favourite foundations, along with the Chanel Vitaline Aqua. This is a foundation that I always come back to. Um, and they reformulated this a couple of years ago, and they reformulated it again. I was quite surprised that they were doing it again, because the formula um, for their previous kind of reformulation was amazing i absolutely loved it and it made me a little bit nervous i'm not gonna lie um but what they've done is expand the range so they now have 67 different skews and by skews i don't mean shades so i think they have 38 or something like that just under 40 shades and then within that family they have two different finishes so not all of the finishes come not all of the shades come in the new second finish but within the whole Dior Forever kind of family there's 67 different options of foundation so a really good shade range and the new addition is the Skin Glow uh, finish. So they've tweaked the original one which now comes in this really sleek glass bottle. They've added this like silver kind of foiled forever on the side. It used to be just written there and a lot more kind of traditional looking. It's very plain on the front now. It just says forever and then Dior there. Um, in terms of uh, SPF, it's got SPF 35 which is really high for a foundation. I believe this is the same as the last one. It claims 24 hour wear. Who's going to test that out? I hope no one, um, <laughs> because it's not very nice. But um, the shade that I wear in this, interestingly enough, I think they've sh they've changed the shades a little bit because I used to wear either 20 or 30 in the previous formulation. I'm now 1.5N. So the shade range is vast. It goes from, I think, 1 to 9 being the, um, or probably zero actually, if, if I'm 1.5, it's definitely not the palest. So I think it goes from zero to nine, and then it has um, cool, neutral, and warm tones as well. So um, the idea being that everybody can find a shade that matches your skin. Like I say, I'm 1.5N in both the glowy finish and the matte finish. So the original one they've tweaked with a few skincare benefits, they've added a few different ingredients in there um, that's supposed to be slightly more beneficial for your skin. In terms of noticing the difference, for me I think this is slightly more matte than the previous formula that I loved. I don't know if I would necessarily notice that much of a difference, it's still really really good in terms of wear, I think it wears longer than it previously did, um, either way still a really big fan of this. Um, and then the new Skin Glow formula, I actually surprisingly still prefer the original one over the glowy finish which normally I would go for a kind of glowy or a dewy finish any day um I still really like this but I just think this finish is just so beautiful it's very very natural and still very skin like even though it is the more matte version um I actually went to an event with Dior and Peter Phillips showed us how he would actually use these and actually a really nice way to use them if you want to invest and buy both finishes is to mix them so use um the skin glow finish on the high points of your face as almost like a highlighter built into your base definitely something i haven't tried yet but i'm going to try out um so yeah that's the new dior forever formulation next up is a new launch for benefit which i'm pretty sure is going to be a fairly big one for them because it's part of their roller lash kind of family it's the new roller lash eyeliners and the roller eye bright pencil so basically they are kind of bog standard liquid liners um they claim to be true matte which i'm actually wearing this today i've been wearing this for the last few days and they definitely are very very matte it comes in black and brown and a mini the full size one's 18 and i think the mini is 12. i've also been trying out the eye bright pencil which is essentially like a concealer toned pencil for the inside of your eyes the one thing was this, I'm pretty sure they only make one shade, which seems a little bit, um, 
crazy because I think this would be too pale. It's one of those things that you can't, you could use this if you have a darker skin tone, but I think it might be a little bit too much. Almost like using a white eyeliner if you are my kind of skin tone. Sometimes it looks a little bit bright. Like some people do it and you can get away with it, but it's better to use one that is more of a flesh tone, which is why this is in more of a flesh tone shade. So I would have liked to see in like, you wouldn't need a huge selection of shades, but maybe two, three, um, instead of just the one. But for me, it works. Um, I like it. I generally like um, using kind of brightening eyeliners on the waterline of my eyes to brighten them up. Something I've done for many years. I haven't actually done it recently, but it's kind of got me back on that or back to using that technique and I actually really like it. Um, in terms of the liquid liner, I'm quite a big fan of this. I've only used it for about three days so I can't report fully. I feel like it takes a week or two to get into the rhythm of using a new liquid eyeliner properly. But the packaging is really nice. It matches their Roller Lash Mascara packaging. I'm not actually a fan of Roller Lash. I think I must be one of the only people on the planet because I know it's one of their like best selling mascaras and it's one of the biggest selling mascaras in the country actually. Um, but. I'm just not a fan of it. I much prefer the Bad Gal Bang um, and the original Bad Gal. But anyway, this is what the liner looks like. It's kind of a medium sized felt tip liner. The finish is very, very matte, really nice. It applies nicely and it lasts all day. Like some eyeliners on me, especially on the inside, they will kind of rub off halfway through the day. This lasts all day. Really, really good staying power on that one. So um, yeah, impressed with the new liner. I haven't actually used the brown one, but I assume that the formulation is the same. I generally don't wear brown liquid liner. It's also nice that they sell a mini if you like minis or if you want to try it out. Although I have to say for £12, it's not that much further off than buying the full size one at £18. Um, next up for um, mascara, this isn't actually new. I think this came out in November, but I wanted to include it because I got sent this and I actually really like it. I'm wearing it today. It's the Rimmel One Deluxe Volume Mascara. And bear in mind, I like my volume a lot. I like really thick um, verging on clumpy lashes. If you like lots of definition and not much kind of boom about your lashes, then you probably won't like this. Um, but if you like that kind of spider leg lash look, um, the new Rimmel mascara is really nice. The packaging is really pretty. I think it retails for £8.99, but it's definitely on sale um, in Superdrug at the moment for like five something. Um, but yeah, really impressed by that. And I haven't tried a new Rimmel mascara in ages. I used to love them. So um, yeah, was impressed with that one. And then other things that have launched makeup wise, or my last kind of makeup launch, are the new Wonder Wand lipsticks from Ciate. Now Ciate is a brand that I have to say over the past couple of years, their launches have been very kind of um, glittery and young and they haven't been necessarily something that I've been drawn to. I really, really like the brand. I love their formulas. I think they're quite underrated actually as well. However, um, they have been doing like a lot of like glitter lip toppers and things like that that are just not something I would use. But these are their new lipsticks. They are Demi Shine lipsticks. They come in eight shades varying from super, super dark plum, bright red, nude. This is Wonderlust, the colour that I'm wearing now. The finish of them is really, really nice. I have to say that's what completely won me over with these. They are a kind of, the texture feels like a matte lipstick, like it's quite thick, it's quite long wearing, and it feels like a proper lipstick. It's not like one of those kind of high shine gloss lipsticks that you get that just come straight off. It really lasts like a proper lipstick and it's, it's there. When you put it on, it's there. The pigmentation is beautiful and consistent um, and the wear time's really nice, but the finish is like a slightly, um, ever so slightly kind of lustrous, like natural finish. It's not a gloss, it's not matte. It's like that just, like they call it, a demi shine. Like it's got a little bit of a sheen to it. The one thing I would say with these, I think the color selection has been a little bit tricky. Um, for me, at least, the nude color is is too like peachy and too nude. And their like rose color is a little bit too bright. Um, the red is really nice, the deep plum is really nice. But I think for me, the paler tones tend to kind of air on the side of orange. A little bit too much but this color actually works for me which is the Wanderlust color even though it is slightly peachy um, I do actually really like it I was kind of disappointed there was a really good one called Sunday which I thought was gonna be absolutely gorgeous um, based on the color of the packaging but actually when you get it out it's quite dark um, much darker than I thought it would be and this was supposed to be the like the kind of like rosy color but it's it's really quite red. Um, but yeah, I'll swatch these anyway because 
colour is always down to personal taste and your skin tone and things like that. But the texture of these is really nice. They're out now and they're £16. In terms of skincare, one exciting skincare launch that actually came out at the very beginning of the year was the A Passioni Retinol from Drunk Elephant. There's been so much hype around Drunk Elephant because it only recently launched in the UK, I think it was October time. Um, but they've launched their retinol, it's expensive, the rest of the line is really expensive so um, unsurprisingly it's £62. Um, I have to say on first impression I was like wow the packaging looks really not premium but it's actually for a reason, it's in this like metal kind of toothpaste, old fashioned toothpaste container packaging um, because it helps to preserve the product itself. It is vegan retinol so it's um, derived from plants instead of animals, I didn't even know that was a thing with retinol so um, there you go. And just to give you a bit of a blurb on the back it says a new breed of retinol, a a Passioni retinol cream is a clean, cutting edge formula that combines 1% vegan retinol with nourishing, superfood rich ingredients to dramatically diminish the appearance of fine lines, deep wrinkles and sun damage, revealing a vibrant, younger looking complexion. I'm a massive fan of retinols um, and I've used this so far about three times. You're supposed to start using it kind of once or twice a week and then move into more frequent use. I haven't had any reactions so far and I've definitely noticed the day after using it my skin does look really good but in terms of like longer term results I cannot speak um, of any yet because I haven't been using it long enough but I really like it the texture is really nice it's a very kind of balmy feeling cream but it's not greasy or heavy it's like kind of sinks right into your skin feels really nice to use um, and really luxurious um, just the packaging doesn't look particularly great but it's quite small and compact um, and it's 30 mil for 62 pounds so um, that is out now so if you're into your retinol or you are having a particularly um, hard time with your skin at the moment, it might be worth a try. And another skincare launch that's come out this month, you guys might have seen me speak about quite a bit over on my Instagram, is the new Clinique ID range. Now, you might remember, I think it was back in, it's probably summertime, Clinique launched the new um, hydrating jelly, which is this clear hyaluronic based moisturizer, it sits alongside their cult classic um, dramatically different moisturizing lotion and also the oil free gel formula as well which are kind of cult products, if you like them you like them, if you don't you don't, however Clinique have done something really cool uh, with their new ID range and they've introduced these cartridges that you can put into the classic formula um, moisturizers in their range and it gives them added skincare benefits so they've got this purple one is for lines and wrinkles they've got one for pores and skin texture with AHAs they've got one for fatigue or kind of brightness um, they've also got one for sensitive skin and redness and they've got one for um, evening out skin tone and kind of dark spots and things like that so a really nice concept the other thing that I really like about this is that it's only five pounds more to get the moisturizer with with the cartridge than it is to buy just the moisturizer alone so it's a really kind of nicely priced add-on if you already use the Clinique moisturizers it's a really nice thing to be able to add on and customize your skincare and add some added benefit to your current moisturizers the one thing I do think they can improve on the, this range is to add an SPF how cool would that be if you add like your own SPF with the cartridge that would be an awesome idea um, but they don't do that yet they come separately but you do buy them together so you can't just buy the cartridge for five pounds and put it in your old moisturizer because you get these special slightly larger um, so this is a new one I haven't used this you get a slightly larger bottle with a screw cap on the top so you have space to be able to fit your cartridge um, into the bottle so you can't just buy these for five pounds but buying the two together is only five pounds more than buying the original one if that makes sense so they're the new Clinique moisturizers and then lastly I wanted to talk about the new um, Diptyque launch because it's oh so beautiful so they've launched a limited edition collection all around roses uh, in January and this is the Damascena candle which is kind of the hero uh, product of the range look at this gorgeous limited edition packaging if you like rose this will be really up your street and just let me show you the actual glass of the candle because it is stunning it's pink and orange which is possibly my favorite combination ever and it smells divine it's super super strong concentrated rose damascena rose and it is gorgeous if you don't like rose you will hate this collection because it is very very like overpowering rose but 
absolutely stunning if you like rose um, and then they also have another candle in the range and they've got a couple of other um, like mini size candles they're doing as well and then they've also added um, slip covers onto there so this is the O Rose um, perfumed body lotion as you can see I think this is really nice for Valentine's Day I don't know if they've done it with that in mind because it's in January rather than February but if um, if you like this kind of thing, I mean, it would be great for Valentine's Day. So that is it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Sorry, I'm back filming on my um, handheld camera today, not my big boy camera, because little one is having a nap downstairs and I didn't have time to set everything up. It's been a little bit of a manic Sunday here. Um, I hope you're all really well and um, I will see you again very soon with a new video. Bye guys.